real analysis let's check for on bounded sets by data of round head department of mathematics mbs government or science science college mahabubnagar so before going to discuss bounded set so i need upper bound set first of all what is upper bound a letter will say that upper bound set also uh, from this upper bound upper bound sets are both them here i am going to discuss let uh, s be a non empty set uh, if there exist to k1 belongs to real number such that x less than or equal to k1 for all x belongs to s then k1 is called an upper bound of s and s is called bounded above set so repeat again i'm taking that let s be a and non empty set s be a non empty set if there exist to k1 belongs to r such that k1 such that uh, x less than k1 for all x belongs to s then k1 is called an upper bound of s that means uh, this k1 is uh, which is greater than for all elements of s that means x less than equal to k1 so k1 is any real number so then the k1 is called upper bound and the set s is called bounded above set for example i am taking here s is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 this is my set okay which is uh, upper bound for this set see pi is an upper bound what is the highest number to upper upper element is here 5 1 2 3 4 5 so pi is an upper bound not only pi you can check that uh, pi find 1 pi find 2 pi find 3 pi find 4 oh, pi find any number something after 5 digit you will get all upper bounds only uh, that means so 6 7 8 9 10 out of that uh, so that is upper bound for this sets all uh, element right why because uh, this pi is greater than for all these elements so that's why is phi is called an upper bound of s okay so uh, that is uh, x less than equal to phi for all x belonging to s so see here yeah, 5.1 5.2 up to so on so on 6.1 6.2 that also and uh, 7 7.0 or also upper bounds of s s is bounded above set example n equal to 1 2 3 n is equal to 1 2 3 what is the upper bound for this set we are unable to recognize why yeah, because we are unable to find any number which is greater than to this elements of this set n that means there does not exist any k1 belongs to n such that x less than or equal to k1 for all x belonging to n so that means n does not have upper bound and n is not bounded above set so similarly you can observe here w 0 1 2 3 we are unable to find any upper bound for this set that's why w does not have an upper bound and w is not bounded above set uh z if you take that z you can take here z minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 so if you take like this uh of uh, see this set also does not have any upper bound z does not have any upper bound so therefore z is also not bounded above set similarly q and r also does not have any upper bounds so therefore q and r also not bounded above set not bounded above sets so uh, we can take that uh, Q and R also not bounded above set. 
here uh, we can take that uh, z other uh, z minus set of all negative numbers z minus is set of all z negative integers here minus one minus two minus three right address what is the upper bound of this set see if you take that minus one is the greater number for this set right that means minus one is an upper bound of set if you take that uh, minus 0 0.9 0 0 0.1 and all the other thing 1 2 3 4 or all upper bound for this set therefore z minus have an upper bound and z is z minus is called bounded above set if you take that r minus r minus and really so set of all negative numbers set of all negative number so if you take like this uh, yeah if you take this uh, this all set of this real number and you have taken zero oh this spot you observe here this spot is negative numbers set of all negative real numbers what are the upper bound of this that means uh, see uh, these are all upper numbers so upper bound is zero after zero these are all upper bounds of this set so that means uh, zero 0 0.1, 0 0.2, that add as 1, 2, 3, up to so on, so on. All are all upper bound for R minus. So that means R minus is an upper bound set or bounded above set. R minus has the upper bounds and we can say that bounded above set. Example. Other example, I am taking that S is equal to singular 1. What is the upper bounds of this set? If I take that 1, 1 is an upper bound for this set. Not only 1, you can take that 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. After that, after any number, after 1, you can say 1.001, 1.002, 1.003, any number after 1, these are all upper bounds of S. Therefore, S is bounded above set or upper bounds. What is my bounded above set? If we take a singleton 0, S is equal to singleton 0. Upper bound of uh, S is equal to 0, 1, 2, uh, or singular 0 is 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, up to so on, 1, 2, 3, that S. So that means uh, these are all upper bounds of S, therefore S is an upper bound set or bounded above set. S is equal to X belongs to us, like that, uh, 2 less than or equal to X less than or equal to. I am taking this kind of shape. That means uh, all the element of the set lying between 2 and 3. If I take like this, yeah, so what is the uh, upper bound for the set? Uh, this is the maximum element, right? So, so this is 3 is the uh, maximum element. That means what we will say here 3, 3.1, 3.2, other after, after 3 number, after 3, these are all upper bounds of the set so therefore s have upper bound so s is called bounded above set so s is equal to i'm taking that uh, yeah uh, i'm taking that uh, x equal to uh, s is equal to x plus plus is that minus one less than x minus that similarly uh, this set have element between minus one to one so this one and 1.1, 1.2, after these numbers are all upper. We can take that, this is the real number. So, all elements of this line between minus 1 and 1. After 1, all our elements are upper bounds of this say 2. So, S is bounded above set. So, I am taking other example. S is equal to 1 by N such that N belonging to N. S is equal to 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4. These are all elements of this set. So, uh, you see, uh, the elements of one uh, this set are uh, decreasing. So, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4. Up to it goes to 0. 0 does not in this set, but the elements are going to 0. So, by observing this, what we have found that uh, upper bound for the set is, uh, here 1 is a magnitude, so 1 is a greatest number. So that means I am taking that 1, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, add add as after 1 any element of real, any real number, so is an upper bound. Therefore, 
is less than upper bound uh, SI have upper bound and SI is uh, bounded above set SI is bounded above set uh, SI is equal to minus 1 over 4 and such that n belongs to n SI is equal to yeah I am taking different set uh, here this is SI is equal to minus 1 over 4 and such that n belongs that means uh, the elements of SR if I take SI is equal to n equal to 1 then what happens minus 1 n equal to minus 1 over 4 or 2 that equal to 1 n equal to 3 minus 1 over 4 that equal to minus 1 so that means the elements of the set is uh, minus 1 1 that means the range of the set is minus 1 1 therefore s is an upper bound or s has upper bounds and uh, s is bounded above set s is bounded above If I take x belongs to a here x belongs to a such that x is equal to here we have to take that uh, 2 so that means uh, the elements of the set like this uh, this is a real number I am taking 2 uh, this part right all elements of the set are lying between so that means uh, we are unable to find any upper bound for here that means this element goes to infinity we are unable to find that means s does not have any upper bounds therefore s is bounded s is not bounded above set if i take like this then what happen x belongs to us is that x is equal to which means this set have an elements so is that why because so this uh, this set have an element so this part x is equal to that means this uh, this part Okay, upper bounds of the set are 2 and all other elements of greater than 2. That means uh, S have upper bounds, S is called to bounded above set. Least upper bound or supremum. Let uh, S is non empty set, let S be a non empty set, let S be an non empty set and uh, U be an upper bound of S. Be careful, let S be a non empty set and U be an upper bound of S. If any real number less than u is not upper bound of s, then u is called least upper bound of s or supremum of s. So be careful. Let us be a non-empty set and u be an upper bound of s. If any real number less than u is not upper bound of s, then u is called least upper bound see simply can say that uh, you may take any real number this is my set if uh, u is upper bound of s any real number less than u is not upper bound of s then we say that s is uh, upper bound of s otherwise it is not uh, least uh, upper bound it is called supremum also suppose for example you can understood here uh, see supremum of s is denoted by sup s for example, I am taking that s is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Upper bound of s are 5, 5.1, 5.2, 5 6, 7, 8. Out of this uh, upper bounds, the least upper bound is 5. See, our definition is that uh, let s is be a non empty set. I am taking that, uh, uh, I am taking that 6 is upper bound of s. So, what is the definition is that uh, any real number here s is upper bound, u I am taking as 6. Any real number less than u that means any real number less than u and we all the less than numbers we have here we are is not upper band then only we say that 6 is least upper bound so that means here we have infinite upper bounds between 5 and 6 why because these are all upper bounds of s so that means 6 is not least upper bound if i take 7 also 7 also same working in this condition 7 is not 7 also not least upper bound if i take 5 this set contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I take 5, any real number less than 5. So, what are the less than number 5? So, if I take that less than number 4.9999, 4.5, 4.6, any number, that number is not upper bound of this set. That's why we are calling 5 is least upper bound and 5 is called supremum. Otherwise, uh, we have to find that. Uh, set of all upper bounds for S 
out of this upper band which is least so phi is least therefore phi is least upper bound of s so but uh, it is understanding it is not definition according to definition how we going to understand vertex s is upper bound of s of s or s is uh, any non empty set u is an upper bound of s i am taking like this be careful s is be a non empty set and u be an upper bound of s any real number less than u is not upper bound of s then only we say that u is least upper bound of s or supreme of s s is equal to single time one if i take that uh, 1 1.1 1.2 up to so now these are all upper bounds of out of this upper bound which is least to one is least otherwise supreme of s is equal to one uh, for example it is okay for definition it is too difficult why just try to understand little bit so s is so these are the upper bound which is least to zero so s is equal to zero if i take s is equal to one by n already we discussed that uh, what is the upper bound of this set to one 1.1 1.2 what is which is least to one so s is equal to one If I take s is equal to minus one whole power of n such that n belongs to n such that uh, what are the upper bound of this set? So super s is equal to uh, upper bound is one super s is equal to one. Z minus super s is equal to minus one or minus that is x belongs to such that x less than zero. Super s is zero. S is equal to x belongs to such that two less than or less than what? Uh, uh, three and uh, other uh, upper bound which is least to three is least to that means super s is equal to three. So this example already we discussed. Out of that, we have to find super super super, right? Um, x plus is that minus one less than x less than one. Uh, this is one and after one number or all upper bound of s which is least one is least. That super is equal to one. If I take this uh, x plus one is that x less than equal to. If I take like this, uh, see two. Uh, this is real number. This is two. Okay, what are the upper bound? The whole element of this set is uh, less than or equal to. What are the upper bounds of two? Uh, so two and all other numbers are the upper bound of S, which is least to so two. Therefore, two is least upper bound of S, and so S is equal to two. Ah, uh, this set does not have any uh, supremums. This set why? Because this does not have any upper bounds. Oh, this set does not have any upper bounds. Therefore, so S. And if I take that uh, n also does not have an upper bound, so super s not exist. If I take w, w also does not have an upper bound, so sub w is not exist. Similarly, we can take that sub q, sub r, and uh, sub z or also not exist. And supreme of other set also not exist. Example, z. See, if I take z, uh, this not a supreme is not exist. So. Lower bound and bounded below set. See, uh, the bounded above set means we are using symbol less than or equal to. Here we are greater than or equal to. We are using symbol. What is lower bound set? Or uh, lower bound of S or any set or bounded below set? Let S be a non-empty set. Let S be a non-empty set. Uh, you may that S be an aggregate also. You can use the term. Let us be an aggregate also. You can use. Otherwise, simply that let us be an non-empty set. If uh, there exists to k two belongs to us, is that x greater than equal to for all x belongs to us, then k two is called lower bound of s and s is called bounded below set. I'm repeating again. Let us be a non-empty set. If there exists to k two belongs to us, is that x greater than equal to k two. For all x belongs to S, then k2 is called lower bound of S, and S is called bounded below set. So be careful. That means all elements of S which are greater than equal to some real number. If that case exists, we say that k2 is upper lower bound of S, and S is called Bounded below set. For example, I am taking here. So M is equal to one, two, three, four, five. I am using this example. If I take this example, uh, one belongs to R, such that 
x is greater than or equal to 1 for all x belongs to s that means uh, this is one is greater than or equal to all other elements that's why i am taking that one is uh, lower bound and uh, s is called bounded also not only one you can take that 0 0.1 0.2 0.3 any numbers are less than one right or you can take that 0.9999 Minus one, minus two, minus three, all are upper bound of this set. So that means uh, zero point nine, zero point eight, or zero minus one, minus two, that are also upper lower bounds of S. So these are also lower bounds of S. So then S is called bounded below set. If I take that S is equal to zero, what are the lower bounds of this set? Uh, zero and three minus one minus. So that means uh, Elements of S are greater than equal to greater than equal to these elements. That's why I am calling here uh, these are uh, lower bounds. So S is called bounded below set. If it is S is equal to one, so what are the lower bounds of this set? Can there one zero point nine zero point eight all are these things are lower bound of S. S is called bounded below set. If it is S is equal to one by n such that n plus n. What are the elements of this set? It has like this. So all elements goes to Uh, one, one by two, one by three. That means it approaches zero, which is lower. Zero is lower. That means zero and minus zero point nine. What are the other elements we can take here? Minus zero point nine, minus zero point eight, zero point five. We can take either minus one, minus two, minus three. All are lower bound of S. S is bounded below set. If I take that S is equal to minus one whole power, such that n belong into S is equal to minus one plus that n belongs to n, so therefore S is equal to minus one comma one, so minus one comma minus two comma minus three are lower bound of S, therefore S is bounded below set. And take that S is equal to minus one comma one, minus one comma minus two comma minus three are lower bounds of S, so therefore S is bounded below set. If I take like this. That means all elements of this S are lies between two and three, which is lower. Two is lower. Not only lower, two is lower. Zero can be lower. Two point one point nine, one point eight, one point six, one point seven. All these zero minus one are all lower bounds of S. Therefore, S is bounded below set. Yeah, if I take S is equal to X plus one, that means all elements of this are lies uh, between minus one less than X less than one. So that means minus one, minus two, minus three are lower bounds of S. Therefore, S is Bounded below set. Another example I am taking that one, two, three, four. That means n it may written as dead place, positive integer. Why? Because this notation I will use in future. That's why I am writing here dead place also. Set of all positive number, positive integers. Set of all positive integers. So it is a dead place also. What are the lower bounds? So this is one also lower bound. Not only one, you can take that zero, one, two, three, minus five, zero, minus one, minus two, minus three are lower bounds of n. Therefore, n is bounded below set. If I take w, so that the w similarly is zero and oh, minus one, minus two are lower bounds of s. Therefore, w also bounded below set. If I take that uh, z equal to zero plus or minus one plus or minus two. That that as lower bounds of jetties not exist. That means we are unable to find any lower number of jet. That's why we say that uh, jetties not bounded below set. Uh, that means it goes to minus infinite element and it goes to plus infinite element. So that's why we are saying that uh, both does not have lower bounds. as well as upper bounds so uh, if i take here uh, q and r also does not have lower bounds q and r cold or not bounded below set if i take that z minus z minus does not have lower bounds why because unable to find the element goes to minus infinite we are unable to find any lower bound for that that's why We are uh, calling that z minus is not bounded below set. If I take other example, or plus, that means x belongs to all such that x greater than zero. Well, uh, what happened here? Which you apply? So, so we make all that uh, this set. Uh, if I take the zero, oh, this they have set of all element which all greater than or equal to zero. This set. 
Okay, so what are the lower bounds? You can take that zero is lower bound. All elements of this part is lower bounds of this. So that's why zero minus zero point nine minus zero point eight eight as minus one minus two are our lower bounds of S. R plus is bounded below set. So this is R plus is bounded below set. If I take that S is equal to where the equivalent of is that. X greater than two. If I take this part, so this has lower bound. This two is lower bound. This are all elements of lower bound. I said that's why we may call that S has lower bound and S is bounded below. So other greatest lower bound or infimum. Already we just now we discussed the supremum. So here we are going to discuss infimum. I'm taking that. Let S be a empty set. Sorry, non-empty set. Let us be a non-empty set. I'm taking for every definition here. I'm taking that. Let us be a non-empty set. I do V B and lower bound of S. Be careful that. Let us be a non-empty set and V B a lower bound of S. If uh, any real number, if any real number greater than V is not lower bound of S, then V is called greatest lower bound of S or infimum of S. So be careful again. I repeat. I am repeating. Let S be a non-empty set and V be a lower bound of S. So any real number greater than V is not lower bound of S. Then V is called greatest lower bound of S or infimum of S. It is denoted by infimum. So, so okay example already we just now we discussed about supremum for this s so here i am going to discuss infimum of s s is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 so uh, if you understand this about the set uh, this so uh, we are understood all other sets also here i am going to discuss uh, s is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 okay uh, what is the lower bound of this set 1 uh, Not only one, we can take the other element, left side elements are all lower bounds of S. That means so zero point nine nine nine, zero point eight eight eight, zero point seven seven seven, zero point six. So all are all elements are the lower bounds of S. I am taking that here one zero minus one minus two, or uh, and so on so on. The uh, all are lower bounds of S. Out of this lower bound, which is greater here, one is the greatest lower bound. That means so we call that one is the greatest lower bound of S. So or so. In fifth, in form of S is one. So, ah, uh -huh, I'm going to show the other de definition, right? Suppose uh, zero is uh, so S is non. I'm applying definition here. Be careful, you can understand. Let us be a non-empty set. I'm taking that V is equal to zero is in form of sorry uh, lower bound of S. So, S be a non-empty set. Zero is lower bound of S. Please stop. If any real number greater than zero, if any real number greater than zero is not lower bound of S, then we say that zero is infimum of S or greatest lower bound. But between zero and one, we have infinite lower bound of S. What we get? Zero point one, zero point zero, zero point zero, point zero, zero, zero point zero, zero point zero. Like this, zero point two, zero point three, zero. That means so we are getting infinite numbers after zero. These are all lower bound of S. That's why zero is not greatest lower bound or infimum of S. If I take one, one is lower. S is non-empty set, and one is lower bound. Full stop. If any real number greater than the what are the real number greater than the? Can you say the one point one, one point two? If any real number greater than one is not lower bound of S, then one is called greatest lower bound or So in form of S, that means uh, after one point, so if I take one point one, one point one uh, is not lower bound of S. So if I take any real number greater than V, is not uh, uh, in form of S. Therefore, we we say that uh, this uh, one is in form of S. So uh, for understanding easy, S is equal to single to zero. What are the lower bounds of this? Are the lower bounds of S out of this lower bound which is greater zero is greater? Uh, we are calling that the greatest lower bound of S is zero. 
that is infimum of s is equal to 0. Other example, s is equal to 1. What are the lower bounds of this set? 1, 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.8. Out of this lower bound, which is greater? 1 is greater. Therefore, the greatest uh, lower bound of s is 1. Infimum of s is equal to 1. s is equal to minus 1 plus that n belongs to n. Okay, this set containing minus 1 and 1. And, uh, okay, which is lower bound? Minus 1. Up to so one other thing minus one zero, which is greater minus one is greater element. That means inverse minus one. Okay. If I take this set, what are the inverse is equal to zero? S is equal to what because zero minus by nine minus by eight or lower bound of S. So that means infimum of S is equal to zero. S is equal to x plus that x plus that that two less that equal to x less that equal to three. Oh, that means two one point nine one point eight or lower bound of S. Inverse is equal to two. Infimum of s is equal to 2. Uh, because these are all the lower bounds of s, which is lower bound, greatest lower bound 2 is greatest to the right, right? If I take this, uh, I simply if I take that, this is the lower bound, infimum of s is equal to minus 1. Greatest lower bound is minus 1, infimum is equal to minus 1. Yeah. If I take this set, natural number set, or positive set of all z plus also. What are the elements of this? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah. So, what is the lower bounds of n? Lower bounds of it is n1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, or the lower bounds of n. Out of this lower bound, which is greatest element to greatest lower bound of n? So 1 is greatest to lower element. Therefore, infimum of n is equal to 1. For example, w is equal to uh, w is equal to singleton 0, comma 1, 2, 3. Uh, we say that uh, lower bounds of this set are 0, minus 1, minus 2. Out of this lower bound, 0 is greatest to the element, infimum of w is equal to 0. Uh, so, what are the lower bounds of this set? Z does not have any lower bound. That means Z uh, also does not have any greatest lower bounds. For this set, infimum supreme does not exist. Infimum here, infimum not exist. So, therefore, we are calling that similar Q and R all does not have greatest to lower bound. Z band also does not have any greatest lower bound. R plus. But is that infimum is equal to what is 0? That means R plus is equal to set of all positive number. What is infimum 0? But because all are the greatest number, but 0 is the greatest element. Therefore, we are the greatest lower bound. Therefore, infimum is equal to 0. Infimum is, if I take this case, infimum is equal to 2. That means all elements which is greater equal to 2 only. In place of K2, we have here K2. So, okay. uh, some properties of uh, this uh, in view of step. I'm taking that uh, let uh, S comma T or two non-empty sets. First one, sup of S plus T equal to sup of S plus sub T. That means S comma T or two non-empty sets. Uh, non set. So, if we take that, supremum of, supremum of S plus T equal to sup S plus sub T. Infimum of S is equal to S plus T or minus T is equal to infimum of S plus or minus infimum of T. You may take that supremum of S plus or minus T is equal to so uh, okay uh, that thing it may be uh, different. I'm not writing here. Uh, so okay, uh, you may write here minus also supremum of, supremum of S plus T equal to plus or minus equal to plus or minus. Supremum supremum of Minus s is equal to inverse. Okay. Uh, simple example you can observe that s is equal to 1 by n, n belongs to n such that. What is supremum of this set? Uh, Supreme is equal to 1, inverse equal to 0. You can the minus s. Minus s is equal to whatever point minus 1. Inverse is equal to this is equal to minus 1 by n such that n belongs to n. So what is the supremum? Supremum is 0, inverse is minus 1. Inverse minus s is equal to minus 1. Supremum minus is equal to 0. Supremum of minus is equal to minus of inverse. Inverse is equal to how much here? 0. Minus 0 equal to 0 only. It is satisfies. Infimum of minus s. Infimum of minus s. Infimum of minus is equal to what happened? Minus 1. 1 nothing but sup s. Minus 1, sup s. That means inverse is less than or equal to sup s. Always infimum of s is less than or equal to sup s. So these are the some properties of uh, supremum infimum. We have to discuss other properties also some later. So, 
Our today our topic is boundedness. For going to define boundedness, I record all these definitions. Okay. What is bounded set? So our topic today our topic is bounded set. So now I am discussing here bounded set. What is bounded set? Let S be a non-empty set. If there exists k1 comma k2 plus class such that k2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to k1 for all x plus s, then s is called bounded set. Whereas so already last time we discussed uh, lower bound upper bound, there we take that uh, only k1 and k2. Here I am taking k1 and k2 both. That means uh, uh, this is definition for uh, lower bound, this is definition for upper bound. So instead of uh, this symbol, just if you write here, x k to less than x one is lower bound, k x less than x one is upper bound. This is upper bound. This is lower bound. If you take this condition, it is only works for uh, lower bound. If I take this condition, it works for lower bound or upper bound. So again, I am repeating. Let S be a non-empty set if there exists to k one comma k two plus or such that uh, k to less than equal to x less than equal to k one. For all x plus n, then s is called bounded set. Or other definition I'm taking here: Let s be a non-empty set if there exists k plus n such that mod x less than k for all x plus s, then s is called bounded set. If I take any number, if I take right, uh, for, if you may define that. Uh, Uh, x less than equal to k for all x plus n. That means k is any real number. I am taking here. Uh, so instead of k to the mod x less than equal minus k less than equal to x less than plus k. Minus k less than equal to x less than plus k. So that's why here I am writing here uh, uh, k plus some positive number here. K plus what plus that mod x less than equal for all x plus n. Then it's called bounded set. Uh, s is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 okay if uh, other way you can define that uh, if a set s is set bounded if it it has infinite super bound or it has lower bound upper bound a set s is set to be bounded if it has lower bound as well as upper bound other definition is a set s is set to be upper bound or sorry bounded set to if it has upper bound as well as super bound and infinite bound So, for example, s is equal to one to three. What are the supremum five? Infimum is one. Therefore, one less than or equal to less than five. Uh, this is k two. This is k one. Okay, s is bounded. If it is s is equal to single, so s is equal to zero. Infimum is equal to zero. Therefore, so both are same. S is bounded. S is equal to one by s is zero. So s is equal to one. Infimum is equal to zero. This way it is bounded. If it is s is equal to minus one, all for us is that n belongs to n. So s is equal to one. In phase is equal to minus one, so this set is bounded. N. So phase does not exist to in phase is equal to one. S is not bounded. It is only bounded below set, not bounded above set. Therefore, it is not bounded. J minus if I take that, so phase does not exist to in phase of S does not. Oh, sorry. Ah. Uh, here, so if you take J minus. So, Uh, z minus has greatest lower bound. So this exists to information not exists to. If I take z here, uh, so it is not work for this. If I take z here, so z is not bounded here. If I take s uh, in place of z minus, if I take that s minus one minus two, it is supreme. So this does not exist. So this exists but information not exists. Okay. So these are the bounded set. Too. Q and R also not bounded. Q and R also not. Bounded set. So here till now we have discussed about the bounded set. That means uh, a set which is set to be bounded, it has lower bound as well as upper bound. If you take any real numbers in this way, like this, you can take any real number. So we can cut this left side, right side. That means k two, k one. So between these so have elements. So then we say that that set is bounded set. If it has only lower cut, that means this set has lower bound. If it is cut right side, that is set has upper bound set, right? So that's why you can easily understand the boundedness of the set. So for defining bounded set, we require lower bound, 
upper bound supremum infimum so these are the very useful in next topic also in sequence so uh, you have to remember carefully if you know all topics here then only we can easily learn in future So, I am going to define greatest element. What is greatest element? Okay. What is greatest element? Let us be a non empty set A for supremum of S. Let us be a non empty set supremum of S. is a member of S, then it is called greatest element. Let us be non empty set. If supremum of S is a member of S, then it is called greatest element. For example, I am taking here S. So what is super super equal to phi? Is phi belongs to S? S. Therefore, supremum of S is a member of S. That means supremum is belonging to this set only. Supremum of S belongs to S. That means Supremum of S is a member of S, then only S is called greatest, S is called greatest, oh, sorry, uh, has greatest element. S P a non empty set, if supremum of S is a member of S, then it is called greatest element. Okay. Supremum of S is equal to phi, that is other than will phi is greatest element. If I take that S is equal to uh, S is equal to X is that oh, 1 less than or equal to X less than 2 super S is equal to 2 less than or equal to S super S is equal to 2 less than or equal to S oh, okay. uh, then what happened uh, this set nothing but 1 less than or equal to X less than that means so, yeah, uh, if it is equal it may have but it does not equal here that one this 2 does not belong into this set super s 2 belong to that does not belong to s therefore yes does not have greatest element to. if i write here 1 less than equal to x less than equal to uh, if i write that means 2 is a member of s super s equal to that is member of s then only say that that is has greatest element okay uh, if i take that other example so many examples you have work right uh, uh, you can take that set of all x less equal to also uh, x less than equal to if i take that set to x, less, x less than equal to that set also do have greatest to element least element let uh, s be a non empty set if infimum of s is a member of s then it is called least element let S be a non empty set if infimum of S is a member of S, then it is called least element. So that means uh, previously we said that greater supreme infimum of supreme is member of S, then we say greatest element here. I am calling here infimum of S is a member of S, then it is called least element. Suppose uh, I am taking here S is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What is infimum of S? Uh, Infimum of S equal to 1, 1 does not belong to S. Infimum of S, 1, what is that? 1 belong into S. So, 1 to the power infimum of S, 1 belong into S. That means it is a member of S. Infimum of S is a member of S. Therefore, infimum is least element. 1 is least element. If I take S is equal to X as that, 1 less than X less than 2. What about this say to? If I take infimum of S, infimum of S uh, is, uh, does not belong to this. That means this element does not belong to S. That means S does not have least element. If I put here 1 less than or equal to S less than or equal to, this set 1 less than or equal to nothing but 1 is member of S. Then only say that infimum of S is a member of S, then the 1 is least element. 
here one is not least element other example i'm taking that n is equal to 1 2 3 in form of n in form of n is equal to 1 so 1 is a member of n only so 1 is the least element 1 is least element supremum n does not exist for this set therefore n does not have greatest element only n has least element to other thing is not right? other example example w is equal to 0 1 2 3 so n of w is equal to 0 is member of s therefore 0 is least element row sub w is not exist therefore w does not have greatest element we take that z z in of z and sub of z does not exist for this set okay in of s z and sub does not exist to z does not have least element as well as greatest element similarly q and r also does not have Reddish element and least element. Example. S is equal to 1 by S is that n plus n. 1, 1 by n, 1 by 3, 1 by 4. In form of S is equal to 0, does not belong to S. Therefore, 0 is does not uh, 0 is not least element of S. In S does not exist. Um, yeah, in form of S exists, but uh, not right. Uh, in form of exists, it is does not belong to Therefore, it is does not have least element. Sup S is equal to 1, 1 is a member of S. So, see. 1 is belong to the set only in power of super equal to 1 so 1 is greatest element if i take like this super so 1 minus 1 less than equal to x less than equal to 1 by 2 in phase equal to how much minus 1 minus 1 belongs to s therefore minus 1 is least element to super equal to 1 1 is a member of s so that is uh, 1 is the greatest element of s therefore we can say that uh, super is member of s therefore 1 is the greatest element of s Okay, uh, yesterday we have discussed uh, two properties of axiom. Here I am going to discuss other properties. Completeness axiom. Completeness axiom. Every non empty subset of real numbers, every non empty subset of real number which is bounded above has supremum. If I take any C, this is R, this is non empty set. If it has supremum, sorry, uh, which has bounded above, then it has supremum. This is called completeness axiom. So this is real number. This is bounded above set. Suppose this set is non-empty set. If suppose this set has uh, bounded above has supremum. Every non-empty subset of a real number which is bounded above. Every non this is non-empty subset of real number which is bounded above has supremum. Similar other thing also. Every non-empty subset of real numbers every non set of real number which is bounded below if i take this real number this non set of it, which is bounded below has infimum this is also called complete axiom if i take this set this real number this is non empty set too, which is bounded below which has infimum therefore this is also completeness axiom r satisfy completeness axiom q does satisfy completeness axiom. that means so we are unable to for infimum i also primum for this set uh, uh, if i take uh, this uh, statement only for defined for real numbers, not uh, uh, rational numbers. That's why all satisfy completeness axiom. Q does not satisfy completeness axiom. Q, R satisfy field axiom properties, solid axiom properties, and completeness axiom. Therefore, R is called complete ordered field. R is called complete ordered field. Q satisfies field axiom and properties and order axiom properties, but Q does not satisfy so complete axiom properties. Therefore, Q is not complete ordered field and R is complete ordered field. But uh, so this is not complete ordered field. So three axioms already we completed. One is so uh, field axioms, second is ordered axioms, so and order, uh, other thing is complete axiom. So R is complete ordered field. Q is not complete or fail. You have to remember. Yeah, uh, I want to define the uh, element uh, one property. So let us be a non empty set uh, epsilon greater than zero. Let us be a non empty set. Some properties of uh, infinite supremum epsilon greater than zero. 
if u is supreme of s then u minus s is not supreme of s let us be a non empty set and u is supreme of s then u minus epsilon is not supreme of s so, why because uh, if i write that this uh, r and this 1 comma 2 set so epsilon equal to i am taking the 0 0.01 supreme of s equal to 2 right if i take uh, 2 minus epsilon what happen 1 minus uh, 1.99 it is not supreme of s so if i take other property s is non empty set and epsilon is 0 v is infinite of s then v plus r is not infinite of s if i take any so if i add any epsilon smallest quantity then that is not uh, supreme of uh, infinite of s See, repeat again. Let us be in our state to epsilon greater than zero e supreme of s. Then u minus epsilon is not supreme of s. So let s be a non-empty set and epsilon greater zero and v is infinite of s. Then v plus not infinite of s. I am discussing here. Uh, here this set uh, infinite is equal to one. One plus is epsilon epsilon equal to zero point one. One plus zero zero one. That means one point zero zero one is not infinite. By where infinite is equal to 1, this is not infimum. 2 minus epsilon, this is supremum, v is equal to this, uh, u is equal to this, 2 minus epsilon, u minus epsilon, that means this is not supremum, this is not infimum. Uh, these properties we will use in future classes, we have to remember this thing. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for watching this uh, topics. Okay. All, uh, today we have covered uh, some properties uh, like uh, boundedness, supremum, infimum, and uh, lower bound, upper bound, and uh, greatest element and uh, least element. Uh, some completeness at the order of exam, complete order field we have to discuss. Uh, we have discussed all these topics today. So, uh, thank you. Thank you for watching this.